call board meeting for our budget purposes at this time. And we'll turn the floor over to Dr. Guatney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Galloway. I'd like to say good evening, board, and good evening to everyone that is here with us, as well as those folks that are watching us online on Rebel TV. Welcome to the Fannin County Board of Education meeting, special call meeting to allow public input on the FY21 annual operating budget. I'd like to check and see, do we have any public comment, Mr. Danner? Okay, no public comment at this time. So I'm going to turn the floor over, Mr. Chair, to Finance Director Susan Wynn. And Susan has a presentation. She'd like to share some information about the 21 budget for us. Ms. Wynn, good evening. Good evening. And welcome to our call meeting to solicit public input for our FY21 budget. So the topics that we're going to cover this afternoon is our projected budget for our general fund for FY 2021. And I've added a section for our special revenues for FY 2021. And then we're also going to cover our our projected budget for capital projects or SPLOS for 2021. And then we'll take any questions and comments. I've kind of divided our general fund budget um, to talk about the general session and our QBE revenues, our CTAE revenues, our local revenues, and then our expenditures. So we can kind of divide it out that way. The General Assembly started its 40-day session on January the 10th, 2020. And on February the 5th, 2020, which was day 12, they recessed until February the 18th, 2020, to work on the FY 2021 budget. But on the 29th day of the session, which was March the 13th, 2020, the session was suspended due to COVID-19. The session returned for its 30th day of session on June the 15th, 2020, and finished its longest marathon 40-day session on June 26, 2020. So... The items that I had presented to you on February the 11th, 2020, which were in the, in the governor's FY 2021 proposed budget at that time have changed. The proposed items had included a $2,000 raise for all certified teachers and a $1,000 increase for non-certified state funded employees making less than $40,000 per year, as well as a 5% raise for transportation and food service employees. And that quickly changed due to COVID-19 and the subsequent downturn to the economy. Um, the state advised school systems to prepare for at least a 14% cut in their QBE allotment sheet. So to be prepared, I prepared revenue estimates using 12%, 14%, 16%, and 18% cuts in our estimated QBE allotment sheet for FY21. And there we go. But I'm pleased to announce that before the end of the session, state revenues did not look as bleak as they first did when everything shut down due to COVID-19. A few of the highlights of the budget from GSBA Capital Watch Online included one, a final 10% cut to QBE as opposed to our initial 14% proposed. Two, enrollment growth, equalization and sparsity grants remain fully funded and there were no cuts made to the state transportation funding. So we have our FY21 budget for our QBE sheet from a comparison of our state revenues for FY20 midterm and FY21 initial allotment. The QBE formula earnings decreased by 1.51%, our less local fair share by 0.71%, our state grant for nursing decreased 5.68%, our state grant for people transportation increased 3.55%. Our charter system lost 3.82% of revenue. And then there is no midterm adjustment. Their austerity is a reduction of 1,448,900. And we have a sparsity grant of $63,648. So our first QE allotment sheet gave us $13,500,843 in revenue and it was a 12.52% reduction, or a reduction of 1.932 million. But since then, we have received another QBE allotment sheet. So they already have the first revision, and that revision changed our state grant pupil transportation. So we now are receiving $553,039 for that. So it's a 2.78% increase. So overall, that increases our loss on QBE revenue to 12.55%. So 
So that is a very small change, but it's a change in our QBE before we ever even adopt our budget. So our QBE was 13.5 million and pupil transportation decreased by $4,110. So our current QBE is 13.496 million. So, and I mentioned this to remind everyone that we'll have a midterm adjustment that will probably come out in March of 2021. And we always hope for an increase based on our numbers, but in very hard economic times, QBE has been cut before where many systems had to add furlough days in the middle of the school year. But I'd like to say that we are blessed, that we are financially prepared, and even if we face more cuts at midterm, and unless those cuts are drastic, I expect we should be fine and able to protect our students and our employees. So to do a comparison, our FY 2021 Georgia State Department of Education initial QBE earnings sheet gave us total funding of 13.49% and that funded 230.12 positions. In FY 2020, the Georgia State Department of Education initial QBE earnings sheet gave us a total funding of 15.4 million and that was 235.86 positions. So this is a net loss of 1.9 million and funding of 5.74 less earned positions from the state for a, a total approximate percentage of 12.55% cut now as of our, our second QBE sheet. So to give you an updated QBE earnings, I went back and compiled the last 10 years instead of the, I think I had six years before, so you, we have our fiscal years 2012 through 2021. You can see the FTE for each year, our QBE earnings, the amended formula adjustment, less local five mills and total state funds. So you can look and see for 2021, we have a reduction of 1.448 million. And that's kind of between year 2014 and 15 when we were at 1.7 and 1.2. And our total funding is 13.496 which kind of falls between year 2016 and 2017. So to continue on for our CTAE uh, revenues, we have our final budget for our FY20. Um, we have the CTA supervision grant, and it was cut 8.99%. Our young farmer grant was cut 19.61%. The ag extended year was cut 9.26%. The CTAE apprenticeship was 10.92% reduction. The CTAE Ag Extended Day was 10.51% reduction, and then the CTA Extended Day was 9.21% reduction. We're not going to have the Ag Construction Related Equipment Bonds this year, but we do have the CTA Industry Certification this year of 5,000. So if you compared them all together, we'd have a reduction of 35.31% in revenue. But if we just compare what we had in 20 to 21, it's 11.42% cut in CTA revenue. So we have, I think that, did that skip one? Nope. So we have now received our 2019 sales study ratio um, from the Department of Audits on July, on June the 11th, 2020. Our overall sales ratio was 38.17 for 2018 and 38.68 for 2019. We received our consolidated sheets, the PT10A from our tax commissioner on August the 3rd. Our final net digest for our current year, calendar year 2020, is 1.653 billion compared to the calendar year 2019, which was 1.602 billion. That is an increase of 51 million in our net digest. So our 2019 millage rate that was adopted and set was at our rollback rate of 10.593. And our 2020 tentative rollback rate will be 10.391 if that's what the board goes with. So we have our millage rate over the last nine years by calendar year from 2012 through 20. And in 2012, it was at 12.9. And if we adopt the rollback rate this year, it'll be at 10.391. So the value of the mills are listed and the total taxes levied would be 17.178391. Well, there we go. To continue with our local revenues for our general fund, we have our current property taxes. We have the budget for 19 and 20, 
to be able to compare with our 2021 projected budget. So you can see where our current property taxes will increase $273,000. TVA, TAVT, and our intangible ta transfer taxes all have higher increases from what we had budgeted last year, but that's actually due because we had actually received that much more revenue this year, so we're budgeting for what we had received. So overall, our total revenue is going to increase $781,971, and our projected overall local increase is 3.92%. So even though we are a charter system, we choose to use the state scale for determining our annual salaries for certified employees. We have a local supplement for all certified staff that was restored from 5% to 6% of state-based salary. And so we are still planning on keeping that local supplement at 6% even during the current downturn. And our school system as a whole, the entire proposed budget for FY21 has salaries for certified employees, 272 employees at 17.95 million and benefits of 8.19 million for a total of 26.4 million. This is a total increase of 0.6 million in salaries and benefits from FY20. And all our classified employees will receive staff increases that they normally would receive in FY21 and the district intends to avoid all furlough days. Our system's entire proposed budget for 183 classified employees in FY21 with salaries of $4 million and benefits of $2.84 million for a total of $6.84 million. The FY21 budget gives step increases, certificate upgrades, and maintains current benefits for all employees. It includes a decrease in TRS from 21.14% to 19.06%, which saves us around $450,000. We have included in all of the salary and benefit numbers for FY21 the money to continue to fund a portion of each employee's single health care insurance coverage at $72.45 per month and a single dental insurance coverage at $27.73 per month. That's $869.40 per year for health care and $332.76 per year for dental insurance per employee. This is a board-funded insurance benefit worth $1,202.16 per employee per year and a benefit of working for the Fannin County School System. The total cost for 447 positions is $388,000 for health care and $149,000 for dental insurance. And the number of positions can vary from time to time. So to recap, we have a total estimated revenues for a general fund, at our July meeting, it was 33.96, but our revenues have increased for a projection of 34.609 million. And we have total expenditures at the July meeting was 37.919 million. I'm having a hard time with that. The estimated general expenditures now are $37.375 million. And so that, but the first budget had used about $3.975 million of our reserves. But this budget will use $2.765 million of our reserves. So our actual July 1, 2019 general fund balance was $17.3 million. And our current June 30th, 2020 fund balance is $20.8 million without considering the accrual of both receivables and payables for the general fund. This is an increase in fund balance of $3.5 million. And this balance is the rainy day fund that's going to carry us through this financial storm. So that concludes the general fund portion and now the special revenues funds. The special revenue funds are used to account for and report the proceeds of specific revenue sources that are restricted or committed to expenditure for specified purposes other than debt service or capital projects. The term proceeds of specific revenue sources establishes that one or more specific restricted or committed revenues should be the foundation for a special revenue fund. So our special revenues are Title I, the L4GA birth to five, 
L4GA Elementary, L4GA Middle, and L4GA High School, Federal Preschool, 6B Flow-Through, Federal CTAE, CTAE Perkins Plus, CTA Perkins 4 Carryover, Title II, Title IV, CARES Act, Pre-K, and School Nutrition. Our high cost fund pool grant will apply for during the middle of the year. So we have a comparison of our FY20 original budget and 21 budget of special revenues that we can compare because we had them last year and we'll have them this year. So we had 3.653 million in 20 of revenue and we're projecting 3.743 revenue for special revenue, which is a 2.47% increase. And that does not include The CARES Act total of 721600 that's being split between FY20 and FY21, and our L4GA, birth to five, L4GA elementary, middle, and high school, as well as the high cost fund pool grant that we'll apply for during the year, and around 9500 in carryover that we'll have from the FY21 rule and low income. So that concludes our special revenues, and then we have our SPLOST. So our projected revenue for our SPLOST was $5.88 million in FY20 and $6.24 million is what we had projected at our July meeting, but now I'm projecting $6.58 million. The total projected revenue with interest was $5.984 million in FY20, and in our July meeting it was $6.399, but now the projection is $6.785. We had projected a transfer of 1.962 from general fund, but now that transfer is decreased to 1.188 million. And we have projected fund balance at July 1, 2019 was 6.932 million. And our projected fund balance for July 1, 2020 is now 10.246 million. Our projected available funds was 12.917 million in FY20. And we have then projected 18.219 million now. So this gives a better picture of what our revenues and our budget look like for SPLOST. We had our FY20 original ESPLOST budget and then our projected 21 budget. And so that's an increase of 11.95%, but that's really something to kind of, I'll explain a little bit more on our next slide, but we also have increased in projected interest. So, but that gives us those available funds. And this is something similar to what we see every, every month. And a spoiler alert, our collections for June of 2020 is the most we've ever had at 663,558. But to look at and, the re and explain the reason of our budget of 6.585 million, if you look at the very last line on, on this slide, it actually gives you our SPLOS by fiscal year. And if you look at each fiscal year, our SPLOS increased 4.1% in 17, 9.3% in 18, 8.6% in 19, and 8.5% in 20. So it's very reasonable to budget a 4% growth. So our projected capital projects expenditures is transportation, 539,000, school nutrition, $44,036, curriculum, 122,000, Media, 50,000. Technology, 775,000. STEM, 50,000. Photocopiers, $21,111. And the facilities and property of $16,613,650. So our facilities, I had said at the, our last meeting, I'd go into more detail of what our facilities and property were. So this includes the Fannin County Middle School, restriping our parking lot, the locker room refinishing, converting heat to gas, and lower ceiling, our chain link fence around the playground, approximately 750 feet. At the high school, we're gonna have the tennis pavilion, a Kenlin art room, lockers for the cheer room, intercom, CTAE, HVAC, revamp, metal wraparound columns in our main building, commercial washer and dryer, and renovate the old GMPE dressing rooms. At Blue Ridge Elementary School, we have the designated parking, restriping, handicap, the front entrance, and there's the step dip, 
protective flooring in room 222 and 224 and replace the carpet in the media center and a marquee sign. And at West Van and Elementary School, we have new classroom windows for security and that are security, gates at both bus pad entrances, update playground equipment, resurface the basketball, tennis court, and the marquee sign. And then for East Van and Elementary School, we're gonna reconnect the fence at the lower field, approximately 425 feet, baseboards replaced in all hallways, new classroom windows, which are security, parking lot sealed, striped, and a marquee sign. And then at the PAC, we're going to replace damaged safety aisle lights. And system-wide, we have a staff development center to bu that's budgeted and transportation facility, Salto locks, large equipment, safety, ELD lights, and land. And then at the Ag facility, a stick barn, French drains, and additional lighting at the entrance. So we have total projected expenditures in our July meeting at 18.214. And then we had projected to only have a fund balance if we had spent all anticipated cost of $52.6, $52.06. But now we have projected expenditures of $18.218 million and a projected fund balance of $841.28. And instead of having a transfer of $1.962 million, that only has a transfer of $1.188 million, which is good news to our general fund budget. And do we have any questions or comments? But we can go ahead and show the actual other two budget documents and then see if there's questions or comments. Mr. Danner, do we have any public comment? Thank you. I have a comment. Yes, sir. That is beautiful for the hardest year that we've ever had, isn't it? It is amazing. That's, I don't know if you call it a miracle, but I don't think anyone expected Thanks to turn this way. Um, we can go ahead and do the the first one's the SPLOS planning document. We can do that one, and then the next. And this is just a detailed form of what our revenues, and then each line item that was listed that had gone through in our PowerPoint and kind of separated out. But then, if you go to the next document, that is the entire the other one. This is our entire general fund budget, capital projects budget, and special revenue budgets with our total revenues and our total expenditures. There's, and this is actually the budget that you'll see in our regular six o'clock meeting, but there's nothing that needs to be acted on in this meeting. Well done on your presentation. I appreciate how you uh, brought forth everything that was updated from the last month by indicating it in red. It was very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Lots of information. Thank you so much. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Good job, Ms. Wynn. There's nobody else has anything, then I'll call for us to adjourn our 530 meeting and we'll readjourn at 6 o'clock. We need a vote on that? Yes. Okay. Motion to adjourn. All right. Can I get a second? All those in favor? Okay, thank you. We'll return.
And good evening again to everybody who is with us here in the audience at the Fannin County Performing Arts Center, as well as those folks who are watching us online on Rebel TV. Good evening to you as well. I'd like to welcome you to the August Board of Education meeting. And before I begin, I'd like to just give a quick shout out to happy birthdays that are here with us this evening. I'd like to say happy birthday to Mr. Eldon Motes and also happy birthday to Mr. Mike Cole uh, this evening. So happy birthday. And our first, uh, besides call to order, our next item on the agenda is the invocation. So at this time, I'd like to call Lieutenant Darvin Couch, who is our Fannin County School System School Resource Officer Commander. He's also the chaplain of the Fannin County Sheriff's Office, and we're going to invite Lieutenant Couch up. And so if you'd please stand for the invocation. Lieutenant. Thank you, Dr. Watney. Lord, let us pray. Our kind, loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you once again today. We thank you for allowing us this, this day you've given us, this beautiful day. We thank you for this gathering together, Lord. We pray that you just go with us, be with us each and every day. Pray, God, that we'd be found doing that you'd have us to do. Pray, God, that you'd be with the board, be with our superintendent, be with our faculty and our staff in these unknown times that we tread. God, give them the leadership, the direction that we all stand in need of. Pray, God, that you'd see that our children are safe each and every day as they come in and out the doors. And pray, God, that we'd do the things that you'd have us to do, to be that light to them, to show them that they are secure, they are safe. And, Lord, just we pray that we'd look to you for that leadership and guidance. We thank you for everything that you do for us and continue to do for us. In your sweet and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lieutenant Couch. At this time, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by East Fannin Elementary School Principal Matt Price. Mr. Price, good evening. Good evening, Dr. Guatney and board. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you, Mr. Price. Item number four on this evening's agenda is to approve the consent agenda. There are two sub items on that. First is tonight's agenda, and the second is minutes. And we have three sets of minutes. Let's go ahead and open those up, Mr. Inslee, and we'll go through. And we have there the July 9th meeting at 6 p.m. Second set of minutes will be the July 9th meeting at 5.30 p.m. That was the call meeting for budget input. And the final set of minutes is the call meeting that was held on July 23rd at 3.30. Thank you, Mr. Hensley. Mr. Chair, I recommend that we approve the items on the consent agenda as presented. Chair seeking a motion. Motion to approve the motion. second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, so items on the consent agenda pass. Okay. Our next item is some special recognitions that we're pleased to announce, and I'd like to ask if uh, Director of Applied and Integrated Instruction, Mr. Lucas Roof, if you'd come to the front, please, Mr. Roof, and. Give us some good news. Absolutely. Good news. We, we need good news, right? I'm um, going to go a little bit rogue, though, looking at the splice from the last meeting. And we got the welding lab. If you haven't seen it, uh, it's looking great. And uh, I just wanted to, to thank the, the Board of Education for that, and Dr. Guatney and uh, Mr. Danner and the, the maintenance team. Uh, they've done a great job uh, just helping to get that prepared and thankful for Splost when it comes to that as well. Uh, Mr. Flowers, Terry Flowers, the, the teacher, he's been working really hard and, uh, to, to, to get it going. And I want to give a, a kind of a, a special shout out, uh, again, the maintenance department. But Mike Sperling, y'all, uh, if you see him, you know, just tell him thank you. He's put in just extra, extra time, extra hours, extra 
whatever he can do to help get that welding lab going. And I just wanted to give a, a special thank, thank you to him uh, for that as well. All right, so when it comes to these special uh, recognitions, the first one is the FCCLA uh, Awards. And uh, so our, our family, career, and community leaders of America, that's FCCLA, uh, those students recently competed in regional competition and national competition. Uh, these students performed quite well. One of the students even came in first place in the nation. So that's not, that's not first place in the region or, or first place in the state. That's, that's first place in, in the nation. So that's just uh, absolutely uh, amazing. Uh, our sponsor, uh, our uh, FCCLA sponsor, Ms. Lauren Owenby, she created a short video that highlights these students and, and their recent success. Uh, Ms. Owenby currently teaches Food for Life and all of the courses within our early childhood education pathway. Uh, in fact, Ms. Owenby helped to build the early childhood education pathway from the ground up and will hopefully be able to lead our, our early childhood education lab and pathway to industry certification uh, over the next two years. So we look very forward to that. Uh, she is highly dedicated uh, to CTAE and highly dedicated to FCCLA. The success of these students would not be possible without her hard work, her steady guidance, and her ability to inspire. Uh, so I just wanted to, to you know, just give her, her, her credit for this too. So at this time, we will show the video created by Ms. Owenby that highlights our FCCLA students. Good evening. My name is Lauren Owenby, and I advise the Fannin County High School chapter of the Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. Each year, students from across the state and country compete in FCCLA competitive events known as STAR events. This past school year, our local chapter had seven FCHS students compete in what was a very strange year for competition. Last February, our students traveled to Flowery Branch High School to compete at region competition. Each student scored in the top two of their event category in our region, advancing them to state competition, which would have been held in March in Atlanta, Georgia. When COVID hit, Georgia FCCLA had to make a decision on how they would select students to advance to national competition without having hosted a state level competition. Proudly, each of our students had scored in the top two in the state for their events at region competition, which qualified them to advance to nationals. Our national competition would have been held in Washington DC this summer. Despite the challenges of COVID-19 and the disappointment of not being able to travel for our event, our students still work diligently to compete at the national level. Each student was required to record themselves presenting their respective project and all documentation and portfolios had to be submitted electronically. All of the documentation was submitted during early June to be scored by a panel of judges and our students competed against thousands of students from across the entire United States. Briefly, I would like to provide a description of each student's project. Sierra Reynolds is an upcoming senior and this was her third year competing in FCCLA STAR events. This year she competed in an event called Say Yes to Family and Consumer Sciences Education where she explored becoming a Family and Consumer Sciences teacher. She interviewed various professionals and visited the University of Georgia to tour their College of Family and Consumer Sciences. Sierra had to create a portfolio and deliver a 10-minute speech. Sierra scored a gold medal at the national level this summer and ranked first place in the nation for her event category. Sydney Tarpley is also an upcoming 12th grader and this was her second year competing. This year, she competed in the career investigation category where she explored becoming a veterinarian. Sydney completed hours of job observation at veterinary offices and also toured the new veterinary school and interviewed with current students at the University of Georgia to discuss her future career goals. Sydney had to create a portfolio and deliver a 10 minute speech. Sydney also scored a gold medal at nationals and ranked third place in the nation for her event. Isabella Tachi is an upcoming senior and competed this year for the first time in an event called Interpersonal Communications. 
Isabella had to create a display board with research pertaining to effective communication strategies that she has utilized within her family. Isabella had to create a display board and deliver a five-minute speech for her project. Isabella scored a silver medal at the national level and ranked 10th place in the nation for her event category. Bailey Pettit, an upcoming 11th grader, and Alexis Hill, an upcoming senior, competed together this year in the Level 3 category of Chapter Service Project Portfolio. For their event, Bailey and Alexis hosted the Adulting 101 program at our high school where they connected with many professionals in our school system and community to present information that is important for students' futures. Examples of their programs included how to change a tire, how to file taxes, and how to participate in a professional interview. The two students also attended a one-day event at Lumpkin County High School to learn how, how their school has utilized a similar program. Bailey and Alexis earned a gold medal at Nationals and ranked fourth place in the nation for their event category. Lastly, Anna Rhodes and Gracie Stewart, both upcoming sophomores, competed for their first time in the Level 2 Chapter Service Project Portfolio category. For their program, Anna and Gracie provided music therapy sessions at our local nursing home and assisted living facilities. The girls had to communicate and connect with both staff and residents of the facilities to successfully complete their project. These girls had to create a portfolio and deliver a 10-minute speech. At the national level, Anna and Gracie earned gold medal and ranked first place in the nation for their event category. In total, our FCCLA chapter brought home six gold medals, one silver medal, and all seven of our students ranked in the top ten in the nation, with three of our students ranking first place. To say I am proud of these students would be an understatement. Each student spent many hours working during and after school on these projects to make them a success. Their diligence, hard work, and commitment to SCCLA and to their programs is so impressive and I am thankful to have been a part of their successes. Thank you for allowing this time during the board meeting tonight to recognize each of these students and their success this summer at the FCCLA National Leadership Conference. So, uh, yeah, I guess I was wrong. There were not one first place in the nation. There were two first places in the, in the nation coming from our kids. So that's uh, amazing. So, again, good job uh, to all the students there and, and to Ms. Owenby. And I uh, just can't say enough about that. It's great. Um, the next uh, uh, special recognition, uh, after meeting virtually with uh, the three elementary school principals and me over the topic of robotics, uh, Mr. Charles Spencer with Tennessee Valley Robotics has provided the, the Fanning County School System with a $5,000 check to be used specifically on elementary school robotics. He also intends on providing us with another $5,000 check next semester to be used on robotics as long as we make good use of this $5,000 check. Uh, although Mr. Spencer cannot be uh, here with us tonight, we would like to recognize him and thank him for his dedication to improving robotics in Fanning County and the North Georgia region. So that's very exciting to get that to get that five thousand dollar check there. Thank you, Mr. Roof. Mr. Chair, item number six is executive session uh, for the purpose of personnel. Can the chair have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? And we'll follow Mr. Danner, who's right there.
While in executive session, no action was taken, but I do entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, we need to approve our minutes from our last executive session, which was on 7-23 of 2020. So at this time, I'll seek a motion for us to approve those minutes. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Turn the floor back over to you, Dr. Glenn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Our next item is a school governance team update, so I'm going to invite Assistant Superintendent Sarah Rigdon up to the podium. Good evening, Ms. Rigdon. Good evening. Good evening, board. Okay, um, let's see. Let's take a look at the school governance team update. The school governance teams have been meeting. Uh, they did begin this past July, and several have been have met since we last spoke. Uh, Blue Ridge met for the first time this year on July 30th. They did not have facility use, field trip, or fundraiser requests. And one of the things that they t discussed was their virtual open houses, which were coming up right before school started. East Fannin had a school governance team meeting in August already. Uh, they did not have any facility use or field trip requests. They did approve a uh, virtual fundraiser, which will happen later this fall. Uh, Mr. Price took a few moments to recognize one of their former SGT members who was tragically killed in a car accident a few weeks ago. And then they also approved their uh, school uh, parent compact and also their family and parent engagement plan for the year. The other meeting, or the next meeting, was at West Fannin. That was on 715. Uh, there were no facility use or field trip requests. There was a fundraiser request for Cherrydale Farms fundraising, which would be virtual, live touch photos, and also the sale of masks that were used in the production of the Lion King. Uh, they also discussed their upcoming uh, STEAM certification. They do have a virtual pre-visit that will be scheduled sometime in October. Fannin County Middle School also met on 715. Uh, they did have one fundraiser, but it's actually only the use of a parking lot for a, a real estate uh, sale that's taking place somewhere in the county. They did not have any field trip or fundraiser requests. The only real item of business that they conducted was they did begin discussions about an exemption policy for um, final exams. We did discuss that a little bit about unintentionally encouraging students to come to sick come to school sick uh, by incentivizing their ability to uh, exempt tests. And so that SGT has to, uh, begun those discussions about whether or not they want to remove that as a provision. Um, let's see, Fannin County High School did have a few, um, a few uh, requests, facility use requests. One was by Ann Gibbs to host some classes to get CNA certified. Uh, they did not have any field trip requests uh, they actually had two meetings in July. 7:15 was their first organizational meeting, and then on the 29th, it was a called meeting to discuss uh, the beginning the process of trying to select the next principal at Fannin County High School. In that meeting, we did discuss the characteristics of the principal that all stakeholders were interested in seeing, and we also had an opportunity for the SGT to give input on any candidates that they would like to be interviewed. We do have a bunch of SGT meetings coming up next week. Uh, Fannin, uh, West Fannin will be meeting on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we will have meetings at Fannin County Middle School and at Fannin County High School. And we also have a meeting scheduled on Thursday at Blue Ridge Elementary. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Regan. Next item is Central Office Update, and this month we're gonna hear from Director of Student Services, Shannon Miller, going to give us an update. Good evening, Ms. Miller. The floor is yours. Good evening, board, and I'm honored to be here in front of you this afternoon to give you an update of student services. In student services, everything that we do is for student success. I know that's all of us, but what we do is we really um, get to delve into some specialized programs to make sure that every kid, regardless of their circumstances, can be successful. Um, the best part about being in student services is that I get to work with a wonderful team of people. 
I get to work with Dr. Connie Huff, who is a phenomenal coordinator. And with all of these areas that we work in, we have the potential and opportunity to be a team player with every employee and every family in Fannin County. So that is the best part about this job. For, but for tonight's presentation, I really want to focus on one area in student services, and that's special education. The timeline for the um, Legal Education Agency, and that's LEA, because we have a lot of acronyms in my world. Um, it's like a whole other alphabet soup. But the Legal Education Agency, LEA, would be actually the Fannin County school system for the, um, for the citizens of Fannin County. And we're responsible for services for children with exceptionalities from the ages of three through their 21st year. So from zero to three, if um, children are born um, and need a, extra assistance and they're identified that early, the state of Georgia provides them services under a baby's can't wait. So by age three, they transition to us. We serve children from three to five, our three to five program is housed at Knight District Head Start. It's our sunshine classroom. And um, Mr. Scott is a teacher there, does a phenomenal job. He does three, four, and five-year-olds. And then with our five-year-olds, we can provide specialized services for them at his classroom, in the um, community classes. And we also serve five-year-olds in now our pre-K classrooms if they have exceptionalities and have those needs there. Then we are responsible for providing them services from kindergarten through their senior year and then on if they don't, um, if our students don't graduate with a general education diploma, then we, they have until their end of the semester of their, the end of the semester that they turn 22. Legally, we only have to go till their 22nd birthday and different systems choose different things. Some systems choose that on their 22nd birthday that they have to withdraw from school. Um, you, are, you all have a policy, JBC, and have supported that policy that those students actually continue to the end of the semester that they turn 22. So if, um, for example, if they're finishing up their high school core work or whatever, instead of them having to withdraw in September, they can finish that semester. Not only do we have a big, long range of ages where we have the opportunity to serve our children with exceptionalities, there's a large continuum of services that we can provide as well. And it can, um, that continuum of services goes from very little involvement. It could be as simple as a consultation from a special ed teacher or somebody in a related service area all the way to a um, self-contained classroom where we have two or three students and a specialized teacher with aids and related services all the way to an alternative placement like our GNETS program which is the a therapeutic program and there are several across the state of Georgia the one that we belong to is North Star um, or it could be home-based services so when we say we have a continuum of services and we're specialized, we can run the gamut and we can um, change the environment. That means that's what we just talked about, like the different locations. It could be in a general ed classroom with a co-teacher. It could be in a resource classroom where you have very few students with um, a specialized teacher, all the way to one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-one -on -one pair pro. And then um, it can also, be um, like just supported instruction with um, different paras. I mean, when I say run the gamut, you just use your imagination and whatever that individual child needs, the team comes together to do it. These are the categories that uh, students can qualify for special education services in, in the state of Georgia. And th these numbers are for Fannin County and they come off of last October's child count. We send in child count, we send FTE twice a year. 
but we do child count once a year, and we do that every October. And with that child count, that's where a lot of our funding is generated for, for these special populations. One reason that three to five is pulled out separately is that's actually a different funding category and a different component of IDEA, which is the law for special education. So if you'll look at the column for three to 21 year olds, that's the total number of kiddos that we have in each of those areas of exceptionalities. So as of last fall, we served 442 students. That is the, a number for that point in time because that number actually changes almost daily on us with enrollments, withdrawals, qualifying and um, exiting um, services. So we try to get just that point in time. We have statistically increased a little bit from last October till today. So um, with those exceptionalities, we um, serve students from everything from blind to um, other health impaired, your mild intellectual disability, autism, um, and I put the acronyms out there beside them because we hardly ever say the whole eligibility category out loud. We again go back to that alphabet soup and use those acronyms. The faculty and staff for students with special needs. This number could be larger because truly every area in the school system supports our children with exceptionalities. Everything from cafeteria to transportation, um, our custodians, I've had custodians to do uh, work assignments with some of our kids. I'm, in, I'm saying every area. So in our system, the special education teacher, and this is your um, about the middle of the continuum that we talked about earlier, these are your teachers that will provide like co-teaching services, and that's when a special ed teacher goes into a classroom with a gen ed teacher, and they teach together or all the way to like a resource setting where you will come into a small group to have um, maybe like a math resource setting or that kind of situation. We have 44 um, of those specialized special ed teachers in our system. Special education that we have part-time, like at the high school, some of our teachers are certified in special education, so they may only teach one class a day of special education or it could be um, somebody that provides a related service like our um, BI teacher, our vision teacher is not 100%, so those part-time teachers, six out of those 44 total teachers do part-time. For our adaptive special education teachers, those are teachers that um, typically serve our students with intellectual disabilities, and those are our students who need to participate in an adaptive curriculum, and that's based on in in with the um, academics, like your um, math, reading, ELA, we also teach your adaptive or your um, life skills. We, the teachers take them on CBI trips, again, acronyms, community-based instruction um, trips, where those students will learn how to um, buy groceries, order at a restaurant, um, go to service stations, job skills, those kind of things. So we have seven out of seven out of the 44 of our teachers do that. We have 23 paraprofessionals that support our special education teachers. And I'm telling you, those parapros that take care of our um, students with exceptionalities, I think they would fight a bear with a buzzsaw if you ended up trying to um, mess with one of those kiddos. And then we're fortunate enough to have two school psychologists also in our department. Related services. Okay, we talked about the age span and we talked about the continuum of services and kind of like your regular education kind of areas. Well, in addition to that, we also have related service areas if uh, students need that related service to help them access the instructional environment. For, we, for speech therapy, we are blessed we have five speech therapists. We have two full-time and three part-time. And collectively together, they serve 194 students who receive um, services for speech and language. 
occupational therapy. We have one full-time occupational therapist, and she has a, we call it a caseload. She has a caseload of 77 students throughout the entire district. Um, we are very blessed to have her. She worked with us part-time last year, and um, part-time with us and part-time at the hospital. She enjoyed the children so much that she came to me at the end of the year to see if um, she could come full-time, and that was a blessing because we were having to do um, some of the related services on teletherapy, so, which is good, and I thank God we had the service, but if you give me a live person any day, because you can build those relationships and have that one-on-one -on -one so much better. And there is nothing that can happen in this department outside of a relationship. Respect and relationship is our number one motto. I mean, you can write a plan, you can write a program, but if you don't have that, then we will not be successful. Physical therapy, we um, have one physical therapist. She comes to us one day a week and she serves 17 students. Orientation and mobility, we call that O and M. And um, an orientation and mobility specialist is someone that helps, um, if you've ever seen someone that um, has a visual impairment, walk in with a cane or those kind of things or being able to orient in their environment or learn how to navigate their space by sound. That's the role of that related service provider. We do have um, one person that does that for us and she provides services for two students. Uh, American Sign Language Translation Services, we do have one sign language interpreter that serves one um, student, so she's with her throughout the day to be in, continually interprets the um, language around that child. Specialized transportation, I couldn't go without um, mentioning this because Denver and his team they go above and beyond to make sure that our kiddos get back and forth to school safely. We have, um, there are seven drivers for specialized transportation and they serve 45 students. The individual education plan, or, or we call it the IEP, and this is where our services, all that stuff that we just talked about, are aligned to the student's need. So we have that whole bucket of stuff that we can do now we've got to get that team together because there's no set pattern. Like we can't say, okay, if, if we have this student type A, then this is the menu that we're gonna give them. I mean, each person, you, you all know that we're individual. Well, we're really individual in um, special education. So what we do is we um, know what we can, all we can do out here, and then we look at every little facet of that child, not just academically, we look at their emotions and, um, you know, what they need from a social setting. So with that, not one person can get together, one person can't know all those services and know everything about that child to be able to fit them together. So what we have is we have an IEP team. And decisions for that child cannot be made outside of that IEP team. And again, back to that team, you've got to have relationships and you've got to have respect for one another. So um, we encourage the student to be a part of that team because we're making decisions about their life, especially as they get older. We want them at the table saying, hey, this is what I need. I know what I need. So you'll have a regular ed teacher, special ed teacher, the parents and guardians are in, um, involved, a school representative um, and administrator is there because, and they serve as the LEA because that administrator knows what resources the school system has and what can be done inside that school building. So somebody has to be sitting at the table with that expertise. Um, and anybody else that's involved with that child, if it's an outside, the parent um, is allowed to invite an outside counselor, an outside therapist, anybody that knows some area of that child, and the more people that we get at the table, the better decisions that we can make for that child to make sure they're successful. And then we have to progress monitor, so if they're not meeting their goals and not um, making academic success, then we've got to change up what we're providing for them because they are gonna, we're gonna make sure that they're gonna learn at the rate that they need to learn so that they can be successful in life. And um, Dr. Connie Huff is phenomenal at um, monitoring that for everyone. She um, stays 
on it. I mean, she is looking for that progress, and if somebody, if a kid's not making progress like they should, she'll come back and say, okay, so and so is not making progress. What can we do? And so she and I will start looking at services and thinking what we can do and call an IEP team meeting. Um, okay, special education and COVID-19. COVID-19. So it has um, helped us. We already think outside the box in this department, but this has almost pushed the edge of any box that I've ever seen. But if, I think I skipped a slide. Nope, okay. If a parent chooses online learning platform like we have right now, what we have done, we have not changed the IEP. The IEP is a binding legal agreement with what we have with the parent that we will provide for their child while they're in a brick and mortar setting. If a parent has chosen to do an online learning um, option for their child or to not come in due to the pandemic, then what we're doing is we're providing a contingency plan for that child because every parent has the right to make the same choices um, that each have in the system. So what we did is we have a contingency plan. We have chosen to do that contingency plan just like an IEP meeting because we are not going to make decisions in isolation for people's children. It is going to be that team. So what we have done for any parent that has chosen um, to do OLL right now is we have completed a contingency plan where we have uh, sat down with an IEP team. We have discussed the either the software platform, um, which software platform might be appropriate, is online even appropriate, do we need to do Google Classroom instead so they'll have a one-on-one -on -one teacher, do we, from for some of our um, adaptive students, do we need to do work boxes? You know, what does it need to look like for that individual child? We've also explained to the parents that if they choose to come back to brick and mortar, that IEP that we have written, that we all agreed upon, that would provide the services that the kids need brick and mortar, it picks right back up. So to date, as of last week, we've added some since then, we have um, completed 73 contingency plans. Big kudo to the teams in the schools that administrators jumped right on. We uh, trained them in how to do, do the contingency plans. Our special ed team um, leads at each school. Those teachers um, have led that process at each school. I'm very proud of each of them. They've never miss, missed a beat. They, will, they always stand up for what's best for the students, no matter how much extra work it causes them, you know, because they're doing this in addition to their regular stuff. They did it with a smile on their face. Um, COVID-19, spring 2020 versus fall of 2020. Spring of 2020, we go to school one day, we go home, and the next thing we know, we're not back in school. But I am so proud of my team. Even in that abrupt of a stop of school, they were able, you know, those related services that we were talking talked about like speech and OT and PT. A lot of systems in the state of Georgia chose not to provide those related services. It was within less than two weeks than our um, speech therapist and our other related um, therapy providers had set up on Google Classroom with the help of Heather Finley and her department and got trained, was working with parents. They had never done teletherapy before, but they were able to provide those services. Our, if, the, if our teachers were in a co-teaching setting, they worked with that gen ed teacher, they would get on um, Google Classroom a lot with them to help try to tutor and teach um, those students. For our adaptive kiddos, they would call and work parent, walk parents through some things and try to do um, work boxes. But again, back to that, I'm a personal person in those relationships. Being isolated from each other that abruptly was emotionally hard for everyone. Um, so coming back, we had a lot of time to reflect, coming back for fall of 2020. So this is when we've decided not only not are we gonna try it, but we're gonna do the same process with our parents. Our parents have the right to be a part of that plan, to um, know what's 
happen, and that's why we decided to do the um, contingency plans with our parents. They've all agreed upon the services that they're, that they're getting and how they are being um, provided. Again, kudos to the team. I hate to even go here because I'm going to claim it and the good Lord's going to let us stay in school, but, you know, sometimes his plans are not my plans. So what happens in special education and COVID-19 if we have another school closure? Well, I get to say this a lot in my world, it depends. If it's for uh, two or three days, the answer would be one thing. But if it's going to be an extended um, amount of time that we're going to be out, then my plan is that we would do a contingency plan for each one of our children based on what they would need in, in, a, in an alternative instructional setting. And then, of course, those plans would look like a lot about what the DPH or the governor's ruling would be at that time. If, um, they came back with a ruling again that said that no one could come on campus or come on site. Well, we couldn't breach that to provide services, so we'd have to figure out the services that we can provide under whatever statute we were at at the time. So, um, but again, it would be an individual process, and um, I keep, I tell my people like a lot right now, the State Department, everybody, they're worried about paperwork and eligibility dates and all these timelines. It's a whole bunch of federal mumbo jumbo we have to keep up with and I tell everybody we'll figure that out my expectation is that the kid and the relationship stays first because if we're doing what's right by the kid then we can get all the paperwork and everything aligned we're not going to do it backwards so um, so again I'm going to claim it we're not going home but um, so, but if we do, that is the plan for each one of our students. Questions, comments, concerns? Yes, ma'am. Are y'all considered essential? My department? Yes. I will have to defer that question to Dr. Guatney. Mr. DeWeese, frankly, I'd have to defer that to uh, the governor. In my heart, can I, in my heart, there's not an educator that's not, or a support staff that's not essential, because I'm, I was a very poor girl growing up, and by the grace of God, I had good teachers, and if it hadn't been for that, I wouldn't have the opportunity to be here with you all today. So, in my heart of hearts, yes, we are essential. Legally, I, I don't know how that's defined right now. I agree with that statement, what you mm -hmm. said. Yes. I'd like to add that uh, you, you lead a wonderful team and you do a great job doing it. And um, your presentation was an excellent description of how all of the teams in the Fannin County School System work together to take care of not only, well, they take care of all of our kids. All kids. And uh, that, was a, that was an excellent mm -hmm. illustrative description of that. So. You've given me a new, new meaning and a new respect for special. Y'all truly are special and your work is. Well, Mr. Awesome. Mr. DeWeese, I think we all have our exceptionalities. Some of our exceptionalities are just defined, and some we can adapt with better. So, you know, I think we need to support everybody in a different way. Just back to our, back to our team. Um, Ms. Rigdon got gifts that I will never have. She can make data walk and talk. Me, I'm like, okay, if it feels right. So a lot of times I'll go to her or um, Denver and his logistical brain and transportation. You know, you can go to him with a problem. But we are blessed. We are a family. And I wouldn't take a million dollars for these people. So. That's how we feel about you. Thank you. I got a question. Yes, sir. Out of uh, all those students that are under this umbrella, how many, in a percentage, how many chose not to come back? physically because I, I know there were some that were said they needed it they needed the interaction they needed the involvement it was 77 out of like 442 can, can you do the math for me there mr. Inslee it's been now that numbers changed a little bit because some parents have um, tried it and then they've decided that they wanted to come um, back to school and I don't have that exact number right. but it's um, 
I would think it would probably be about 10% now, and I think, and Ms. Rigdon with her data can correct me if I'm wrong, I think we were around about, what, 10% population as a whole when you did your surveys for the whole. So. Well, I know after Shay was here and said she knew her kids needed to be back mm -hmm. in that, uh, through my comment in closing, by that time I got home, there were several emails or texts, and I know that one of them I sent to you, and uh, they got back with me and told me how much comfort that you gave them about their child coming back, and so I want to thank you for that, and and I think I think there'll be more coming back because you do have a heart to care. Okay. We love them. We love everybody. And I'm blessed to have a wonderful partner with uh, Dr. Connie Huff, too. So. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Our next item on the agenda is number nine. This is a reopening update. And I've asked Ms. Rigdon to put together an update um, just to kind of just to kind of showcase the first five days of the school year. We've completed five days today, Ms. Rigdon. I know it. It's hard to believe. Yeah, welcome back. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I am super excited today to get to stand before you and talk a little bit about one of our favorite days of the school year, which is the very first day of school. Uh, first day of school last week uh, was on Friday. Uh, you could not imagine the excitement that we all felt getting to see those kids come back on the uh, school campus. It was a fabulous day. So I'm going to quickly go through each of the schools and share with you some pictures and some quotes from their principals. At Blue Ridge Elementary, Dr. April Hodges shared that one of the most overwhelming things that they've noticed is how excited the kids are to be back at school. They've missed school so much, and many of them have told the adults on campus how much they've missed them. She, of course, did share that one of the challenges that they're expecting is a change in routine because there are a lot of things that we're doing right now that we haven't ever had to do before. But the students are doing great and are finding their way to class. They're independent and they're responsible in all the protocols and changes that the school has had to make. So moving over to East Fannin Elementary, Mr. Matt Price, the principal, shared that EFES has gotten off to a great start as well and that the kids were super excited to be back in school. I can see that kid up in the top right. <laughs> he was all tuckered out. <laughs> the biggest concern for the school was what traditional school was going to look like with all the new safety measures that were in place, but everybody has been awesome with their support and their compliance in all the safety measures. Teachers have hit the ground running, teaching those rules, expectations, and safety procedures, and everybody has been awesome with their new duties and responsibilities. Of course, he also highlights the fact that we've worked hard and we did a whole lot of planning, whether it's with district people or DPH, and also feedback from teachers, parents, and students, and the community as a whole, and it's started them off on a great, successful year. Moving over to West Fannin Elementary, Principal Allison Danner says that West Fannin is very excited about the new school year and how wonderful it is to see the students and hear their laughter in the hallways. You cannot imagine how hard last spring was for all of us who were here without the kids. Schools are way too quiet without students there. <laughs> Allison also shared that the staff, students, and parents have been very cooperative and understanding about the new safety protocols and procedures and that they're very fortunate to be surrounded with positive people who take care of each other and the kids. Fannin County Middle School, I love that picture on the right. How awesome is that? So Principal Keith Knuckles has shared that it's heartwarming to see FCMS students returning to school. They've truly missed them. Returning seventh and eighth graders brim with confidence and excitement. New students and sixth graders are still a little wide-eyed and quiet, and they're getting adjusted to the new setting. He expects that that's going to change very soon. Compassion and encouragement are among the several characteristics of staff members that make us special at FCMS. We're thankful to work with these young people once again. Our teachers have planned diligently and I believe are even more prepared to educate our students on the challenges we face now and to come. We're excited and ready. Finally, at Fannin County High School, Principal Eric Schofi shared that he's extremely proud of his virtual online team who has worked tirelessly to ensure that all students feel safe in their choice of learning environment. It's been made possible by the purchase of a site license for Odyssey Wear Although the time constraints of launching an online program while launching a brick and mortar school uh, have certainly posed challenges, FCHS students 
have, success, have been successful in a program of choice by the end of the first week of school. Uh, he also states that he's been happy with the efforts of his staff uh, with the start and the closing of school day procedures because every day approximately 900 temperatures are being taken as well as managing the traffic in the morning and the afternoon. Students seem to be adjusting and changing their previous routines such as congregating in the hallways, being aware of their surroundings and lunchtime, etc. So they're also off to a fabulous start. Let's check in with a couple of our departments that are at the district level. First, personnel. Mr. Robert Inslee, he conducted a new teacher orientation day right before school began, and those are our new teachers. It's pretty exciting anytime you get to welcome new people on. Uh, it is really strange times, and that's the first time I've ever seen a picture of new teacher orientation where everyone was so spaced out. But it was a great day. Ms. Candace Sisson and the nutrition department has shared a couple of items about the start of school year. Of course, the school nutrition staff is excited to welcome the kids back, and they're following all the recommended protocols for food service by offering all food items in individually sealed containers. They're washing their hands frequently, sanitizing those surfaces, and wearing gloves and masks appropriately. In the first four days of school, Fannin County School Nutrition serves 3,762 students breakfast and 4,335 students lunch. At Fannin County High School, students have an option to pick up breakfast in the cafeterias always, or they may pick up breakfast from two new locations in the gym and the CTAE building. Over at the technology department, Ms. Heather Finley has been extremely busy as well. The tech staff has developed an email distribution list so that parents of online learners can quickly reach out if they're having problems. Any parents with questions can email online at fannin.k12.ga.us and their message will reach not only Ms. Finley, but also Sarah Welch, Scott Mathis, and Marianne Walker so they can reach out quickly and try to resolve issues. They're also working on providing uh, more Wi-Fi hotspots in the community as well as supporting 70 uh, Wi-Fi hotspots in the homes of online learners. They've also ordered a new system, you'll see the picture on the left, so that every teacher in the system will have one of these devices which will easily allow them to video conference, live stream, and record lessons. They'll be training people soon as the materials are coming in so that if we need those devices, we can quickly get those into place. Transportation, Mr. Denver Foster has shared several things, including the positive input that he's received about the new express bus routes. He's talked to principals, SROs, and all the drivers, and most people are seeming to be pleased at the way it's working. He's also been changing the bus and parent pickup areas at the middle school to make it more efficient and safer. Finally, the administrative side of Here Comes the Bus is up and functional, and it's going to be an outstanding tool for their department. It's already saved many hours of phone calls and cut way down on the radio traffic. It makes the bus operations much more safe and more efficient. So now let's go to online learning. Check out our online learners there on the right. So let's talk about how many kids right now are in the online learning program. At Blue Ridge there's currently 64 students. At East 78, West 76, Fannin County Middle 126, and Fannin County High School 165. So the system-wide total for online learning currently is 509 students. The school system enrollment of all children is 2,922, so that means our online learning percentage is about 17%. 83% of our kids chose to come back to traditional school, and they're part of our face-to-face -face instruction every day. We've had a few online parent uh, test testimonials that have been sent to Ms. Welch. Uh, Sarah Welch, by the way, is knocking this one out of the ballpark. She's sending them emails almost every single day to the parents who are participating in online learning, doing a jam-up job of trying to communicate and help ease the, the uh, concerns and the strain of trying to learn a new platform. Online learning is not easy. It is very time-consuming and it's difficult. And I know that a lot of parents are frustrated because it does not just, you can't just turn on a computer and then let the child work on their own. It does take someone sitting with that child to be be successful. But we have had some very positive uh, testimonials as well as some uh, suggestions for growth. But tonight I'll share with you some testimonials. 
one person said it's a really good program, and since her background is in ELA, she's been impressed with the depth and breadth of the standards covered in lessons. Yesterday, she looked ahead so that she could get prepared as a parent, and she said, thank you for what you're doing. It's a blessing. I'm truly grateful. Another parent also said that uh, she had shared that it had been a great day in online learning. The videos and links worked, and we accomplished what we needed to do. Thank you for your help. And so Sarah is doing a jam-up job of getting information out to those families to help them learn how to navigate these waters. Uh, this parent also shared that she quickly realized that the system will let kids work ahead. It doesn't actually stop them. And so parents have to set up their online schedule at home to decide how much time they'll devote to education each day. So this little girl, she apparently, two, year, uh, two hours later, she was still working on her science because she was so engaged by it. The final comment is that we appreciate everything the FCSS is doing to help uh, with these unprecedented times. The opportunity to learn virtually is an absolute answered prayer. Thank you for helping us with this and taking the time to be so considerate and caring by walking me through the process. I am humbled and grateful. That's really the majority of the uh, comments by parents really are fairly reflective right there because most people are extremely grateful for this opportunity. Now, it hasn't been perfect and it certainly hasn't been easy. It has not been as seamless as what we have hoped for, but it is getting better and we are extremely proud that our system has this opportunity that we can present to our families who feel like educating their, their child at home is the best choice for now. But we do look forward to the day they're back in our buildings. So do you have any questions or comments about our first week of school? It's a great summary. Lots of activity. I love how it all works together. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Reagan. Uh, Mr. Ansley, before we go on to the next agenda item, I'm going to include this in the reopening update. This is this is hot off the press, and I'm going to this is this is a bit impromptu. Come on up, Mr. Roof. We'll go to the podium, and let's ask Mr. Ensley. This is the website, the Fannin County School System website at www.fannin.k12.ga.us. And if you'll notice, we 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 work hard here in the Fannin County School System to keep people informed. Uh, in fact, just in the past week, uh, I've had an announcement on WXFC 92.7. I've also sent home a letter uh, on August 11th to parents. One of the things that's on people's minds right now is, uh, is COVID-19. And so the letter that I sent home on August 11th, it, it addressed some information that has to do with the school system's response to COVID. And in the interest of transparency, one of the things that I think folks really want is data. And so I'd like to commend uh, not only Mr. Ensley, but uh, Mr. Roof and Ms. Finley. They have put together, and they're going to update this weekly, and we've posted, as we do my communications, for example, the letter was, was on Facebook. This will be on social media as well. Um, this is going to be a weekly update, and this is live in real time on the Fannin County School System website. So you can call this up, and uh, at this point, let's kind of turn it over to Mr. Roof, and you talk to us a little bit about these fields, Mr. Roof. So yeah, for, like uh, Dr. Guatney said, we plan, we're going to update this uh, weekly, uh, one time every week. I think we decided on Friday mornings, uh, not including this Friday, which is tomorrow morning, because it's already been updated right now. Uh, but by next Friday, it will be updated again. And so what we're going to do is uh, just uh, like Dr. Guatney said, for the sake of transparency, uh, we'll have uh, that top number there. That's the total number of students uh, in Fannin County School System. If you notice, we, we did point out there uh, with a footer, though, that, you know, we do have the, the online learners as well. So we wanted to make sure that that wasn't confusing for people. Uh, then uh, the next number there, you know, you, you have just the total number of students with a, with a current positive case. So we'll have that status uh, every week. Uh, right now, you know, I can tell you all that the three that we have there, uh, those three, um, determined, they, they figured out that their status was positive before setting foot into our buildings. So we have, uh, so that, that's good news for us at this, at this point. Uh, the, like I said, those three there, uh, uh, they, they figured it out before, before they had to, to come on day one, so they have not set foot in any of the, the schools uh, at this point. Uh, the next number there, that's the total number of students quarantined uh, for possible exposure. So uh, we have a, kind of a, another footer there at the bottom, 
that shows that this could mean quarantine due to school exposure or household exposure. Right now, uh, those eight, those are actually uh, due to household exposure. Uh, so again, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're doing a good job uh, in our schools to, to try to stay as safe as we can. Um, also, just want to, you know, make sure we understand that, you know, that what, what quarantine means. And, and that just means, uh, you know, somebody that's having to, to, to go out for a period of time because they came in contact with a positive case. So that doesn't mean that those are positive cases of COVID-19. Those are just the people that the DPH, the Department of Health, uh, is saying, hey, you know, they, they need to be uh, home quarantining because it's, it's, they came in contact, in close contact with someone that, that, that had the virus. Um, the next, you know, then after that, it moves down into the employees. So we have the 472 employees in our school system. And then after that, the, the two there, that's the total number of employees with a current positive case uh, right now. And then uh, underneath that, we have the total number of employees uh, quarantined uh, uh, for a possible positive exposure. Uh, I will say also that, you know, right now, uh, those two that, that, that were current positive and then the nine quarantining, that all happened during pre-planning. That all happened before students came to school. Uh, so, so at this point, we've done a great job of, of, of protecting everyone that we can and, and trying to uh, be as healthy as we can. And before we you know, dig into, if, if, if we have any other questions about data or anything, I do want to point out also, you know, as I watched Ms. Rigdon's uh, presentation, that I made a point uh, over the first part of school here to make sure that I've been in every single school on multiple occasions. And, and I can tell you that you know, we're, we are doing uh, we're, we're trying as hard as we can to keep a safe environment for our kids uh, with, the, with the protocols and, and, and everything that we have in place. Thank you so much. And I think it's important just to reiterate once again that just because somebody is quarantining, does, that does not equate positive necessarily. Correct. Does anybody have any it's questions? A, it's a preventative measure to help prevent spread in case they do become positive. Absolutely. And that's why we emphasize if anybody has symptoms or exposure, it's very important that they not only contact the school, but that they don't come to school if that's what's required. Absolutely. That number at the bottom, that could possibly be truck, uh, bus drivers, lunchroom workers, custodians, any employee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not necessarily teachers. Yes, sir. And this number also is basically upon the just out of the abundance of caution as far as us having the teachers out, I understand that with our current, like we already said about essential and stuff, that being a question. So that's the only the reason we have the nine is just because of abundance of safety, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, due to, uh, that's just based on the Department of Health guidelines and, and like, like you said, for that abundance of safety. Yes, sir. Just following those guidelines that, that we're asked to follow. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Well done, Mr. Root. And again, you can access that information online on the website. Number 10, facilities update. We're going to invite Mr. Danner up to the podium and give us an update about recent activities with facilities. Good evening, Mr. Danner. Good evening, Dr. Guatney and the board. Uh, don't have any pictures uh, this month for uh, facilities, but uh, just give you some updates. Uh, the old gym, um, HVAC, uh, air conditioning, heat. Uh, we are ready to install once the actual units get here. Uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we're waiting on four AC units coming from Mexico. So once they get here, uh, we'll be ready to go. I talked to the contractor. He said, you know, once those that equipment gets here possibly three days, uh, they'll be completely finished with it. Uh, also at the uh, old gym, we uh, uh, renovated the old, uh, the, one of the locker rooms there, the PE locker rooms. Uh, that was a request from the high school, so got that completed. Uh, West Fannin, we had a drainage issue. Uh, if you ever went there after a rain, I mean, it was a pond out there. So again, we got that completed right before, actually the day before school started. Um, uh, we 
got it uh, hydroceded there, so we got some way. Uh, water coolers, we, uh, the, the district, uh, due to you know, not having water fountains, the uh, DPH and everybody else says, you know, you don't need to be using water fountains. So we, we got a hold of a company, actually a local company, uh, that does water coolers that it, it's, I don't want to say it's, it's not touchless, but it has foot pedals. So again, it was a very unique and very uh, new technology. It's not infrared, anything like that. Uh, so again, we do have uh, a water cooler at every school now. Um, we're still in the process of, of un, uh, taking the power off and turning the water off to the old water fountains. Uh, if you just go unplug it, um, you know, then it causes a water problem. If you just turn the water off and leave it plugged up and you just put a big bag over it, it could uh, essentially catch on fire. So again, so we're still in the process of doing all that. Um, but again, so we have got that completed. Uh, on, on Sarah's there about the traffic at middle school. That has been a very, um, uh, actually been a very team effort between the SROs, the Fannin County Middle School, uh, admin, transportation department, uh, we just put our heads together and trying to come up with a solution to make it more safe for the kids. And uh, so beginning Monday, so board, you're probably going to get some calls uh, Monday evening. Uh, it's going to be a whole new traffic pattern at uh, Fannin County Middle School. Uh, so I guess giving you a heads up now. So I hope it goes very smooth. And, uh, but, you know, anytime you do something different, it's going to take some training with our staff. It's uh, going to take some training with our parents. So again, the middle school is going to send that out through social media. Uh, phone calls and everything else. It actually got pamphlets. It's got diagrams and everything else. So again, it's going to make it uh, more safe for uh, for the drivers, for the kids, and everybody there at Fannie County Middle School. Okay. Uh, Any questions? Uh, on before I before okay. I go forward, I've got uh, Mr. Mr. Roof. I mentioned there about the custo uh, the maintenance staff. Uh, I'm tell you what, what a great group of guys. We've got six guys that God fearing men. And uh, as of today, at 3 o'clock, 209 work orders have been completed since July the 1st. And, uh, and that's completed, and that's recorded. And again, you've got every principal here. I guarantee you, they can tell you uh, that, you know, when those maintenance men come on, they get pulled to the side and say, hey, will you do this while you're here, do this while you're here? So that number is not accurate. But again, that's the recorded. So again, I just want to uh, give them a shout out to, uh, they do a tremendous job. They make me. They make me look good. All I do is just print it out and send them out. And uh, so again, I, I I wanted to say that publicly. And again, I say that to everybody. So again, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Any questions on facilities? We'll advance on. Then the next item is also yours, Mr. Danner's construction update. Lord, we we talked about this the, uh, last month. Uh, this is the first time that y'all really seen diagrams and floor plans and, and that sort of thing. Uh, we've got some tentative numbers uh, from our, our CM and from our architect. Uh, at this point, I need y'all to tell me, are we going to build one? Are we going to build two? Are we not going to build anything? Uh, if y'all tell, you know, tell me to, I'm going to, you know, it, it's not really a vote. We need to decide on, uh, on, on one of the exteriors of one of the buildings. So, uh, again, it's nothing really to vote on. I just need you give me a thumbs up, and then I'm going to ask you one more question. You tell me which one you want, and then we're going to get started. Uh, I have already, uh, through the, uh, the architect, uh, have already asked uh, about the core drilling, see what type of dirt, see what type of, I don't want to say rock, but because uh, we, we, we don't want rock there. So, again, that is in the process. And uh, so it's coming very soon. I, we, I don't have that yet. Um, but again, Mr. Enzi, if you'll go back to the transportation facility, uh, right there, yeah, just give it right there. That is one view of the transportation facility. Uh, scoot up one time, no, nope, the other way, Mr. Enzi. Uh, there's the floor plan, uh, been vetted with, uh, with Mr. Foster, with the architect. Uh, again, it's not completed, but again, that's a, a very good start on the transportation facility. Uh, so if you just give me a thumbs up, do, do y'all want us to build a transportation facility? So what you're asking for is feedback. Because, Absolutely. Yeah, I because then you're going to have to turn around and meet bite. with the architect and, and meet <laughs> with the construction manager, and then they're going to work out the details of what exactly this is going to look like, what would the price be, and then that's where the board approval comes in. So Mr. Danner just needs some direction 
to, to sort of get the architect and the construction manager in progress to bring back a package that then can be presented to the board and considered and approved by the board if it's yeah, the board's the, desire. The CM at risk, you know, I mentioned this last month. You know, we give them a, uh, of course, they've been looking at floor plans, uh, but again, there's nothing specific about any of this type of stuff. So again, he gave us a, a best estimate uh, from their knowledge uh, of years and years and years of experience. Uh, they gave us an estimate on how much it's going to cost to build something like this. Uh, per the transportation facility and or staff development and or both. And, uh, and again, we discussed last month uh, a substantial savings if two of them get built at one time just from moving equipment and that sort of thing. Uh, but I highly recommend if you only choose to build one at this time, we go ahead and grade that property for both facilities uh, because again, that's going to be a substantial money savings. Uh, uh, but again, I, I just need guidance from you. I'm transportation of, facility. I'm in favor of both and have been. You've given us enough instruction, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. How transportation facility is a go. All right. All right, Mr. Foster. All right, Mr. Ainsley, if you'll scroll on up. Um, uh, again, this is the transportation facility. Uh, this is one option of a staff development center. Uh, this is option 6C as just a 3D uh, rendition of that uh, of that facility. Uh, Mr. Enns, if you'll go to the next screen. This is the floor plan. Uh, the floor plan, again, there's a couple little tweaks we gotta, we gotta put in there. But again, that floor plan is gonna be pretty much the basic design of the staff development if you choose to, uh, uh, to go forward with this. Uh, again, this has been through many, many, many different uh, options. Um, uh, and when I say options is they sent us a plan, no, we don't like this, let's do this, we don't like this. So again, we're getting very close to a final product uh, when it comes to the floor plan. What I need guidance from you is number one, yes, we need to build both at one time. If you do say both, then I've got to get you to tell me which exterior uh, that you like on this type of development center. Robert, if you'll scroll up, please, or down. Uh, the, the 3D rendition that you've seen uh, was this one, it's option 6C. Uh, and why it's 6C is because this is the sixth option that we changed up until this point. And then once we got that option, then we made some more changes. So it went through 6A, uh, 6B, and 6C. So this is what uh, one of the pres uh, uh, presentations that we want to give you. Uh, notice it has a, uh, it's got a metal roof on one side to the left. Uh, on the 3D rendition, it's got a you know a very nice entrance, and then it's also got a flat roof that is very traditional for many large buildings. Uh, again, why the difference in the two? It just it's just an appearance type thing. Uh, cost differences between this option and other options is very minimal. So again, just get you a good you know get you a good view of that one. That is 6C. Uh, option seven again the same exact floor plan but just notice the appearance looks different. This is a full metal roof throughout the entire uh, facility. Uh, of course, it does not have to be brown, but again, that is the same exact floor plan. It's just what, it, what looks different. Uh, the only, if there are any positives or negatives on this, if we go with a roof like this, that means the HVAC units, the, the air conditioning, the heat units have to be, they don't have to be on the ground, but it's more structurally sound for those to be on the ground, which could cause some, some limitations with, you know, landscaping, parking, or whatever. So uh, while on the flat roof, you could possibly put some, some units on the roof. That is option seven. Option eight, again, only, only change in this, uh, again, is the roof. Uh, this is architectural shingles, like you might have at your house. Uh, I don't recommend it, but if you choose to build the architecture singles, I'll do whatever you wish to do. Same floor plan, different view with, a, uh, with, with shingles on it. One more, Mr. Hensley. Last option, uh, it's not in color. Again, same, essential same floor plan, but this would be like a, uh, I don't want to say a modular, this is very similar to what we have at the Ag Center. Uh, it's prefabbed off-site come and then put together on-site. Uh, again, you know, just picture the Ag Center in your head, but then also this has a full metal roof. Uh, again, 
we asked them to do this because we wanted to see the cost difference between all these ones. But again, this is, is metal siding with some rock at the bottom as opposed to the other three are brick. What we thought would be a huge cost savings was really not a big cost savings. And uh, so again, that's the four options I would like to present to you if you choose to build both. Um, I just need you to tell me which ones you like. I like oh, I like C. C six C. Six C. Yeah. Six C. Which one six. which one can you put the, the units on the roof? I think they like the flat roof. Yeah. yeah. This one, the six C, yeah. uh, it, notice it has a flat roof. We could possibly put units up there uh, if we choose to do so. Is that uh, not what you recommend? I recommend it. Uh, Again, you know, we have to tell them that we want it on the roof, and then when the actual architect and the engineers get together, they will design that roof to hold that unit. If we tell them we're going to put it on the ground, we could do a flat roof and do something else, but at least this gives us an option to put it on the roof. I favor it. <laughs> I, I favor 6C. 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 Okay. All right. So, so you again, have your direction. You. Right, so I, I just want one more nod. So yeah. I need to go forward with both, and we're going with 6C. And so it looks like uh, the intention is to go ahead and work with the architect, work with the construction manager, come up with a package that, uh, that you can begin, that they can begin working together and begin to price things out, get an idea of a package that then comes back to the Board of Education for consideration, review, discussion, and approval if it's the desire of the board. Absolutely. Yeah, but instead of a one-page document that I can show you, now it's getting ready to be big, thick documents. And, uh, and that would require board approval. And that, that would definitely Because it would be tied approval. to a dollar amount. Absolutely. And then we can, you know, once we get that, that diagrams from the architect, uh, we can talk to our experts, uh, experts in-house. And, you know, hey, we don't like, we don't like this. You know, and, and they've laughed at me, the CM and also the architect. My goal is to have zero work orders once this gets started. Of course, I know that's not going to happen, but if we can get everything we want on that plan and, and get experts in there, not just listen to one person, not just listen to the architect, get everybody involved, you know, we will have very minimal work orders, uh, work, uh, change orders. Change orders uh, cost money, and we don't want to do that. Let cost me go money ahead and, and time. Say thank you for doing that. For including all of that. It's exciting. You got your work cut out for you, Mr. Danner. Uh, I'll tell my wife when we get home tonight. We'll see her in about 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be careful promising the time. It's, you know, weather. Now, now you just guaranteed a snow this winter. <laughs> well, that's true. Very true. All right. Now you've got some items. Number 12 is also yours, Mr. Danner. Yeah, actually, I forgot about that one. Uh, Approved request to surplus property. Surplus property. Uh, so there is some property out there where these buildings are going to go, and so there's some that uh, some stuff that could be sold, perhaps. Correct. The 36 and a half acres that's out there where we're going to put these items, uh, we've got some things out there that the community might want. Um, uh, so again, I went out there, took some pictures. I did not include the pictures on here. Um, uh, but there's some things out there, again, we might want instead of just waiting to the, uh, the demolition of these things. So, again, I'm asking approval to surplus some of the property that's out there. And when I say property, it's just items, again, that might be useful for somebody. There's two, two garage doors out there, uh, a, a heating unit. Uh, talked to uh, Mike Sperlin, and he said, yeah, I, you know, somebody might want that. So, again, we put that on there. Uh, there's two metal doors. Uh, there's a lot, when I say metal drawers, uh, I went upstairs in one of the places and there's these little, little metal drawers about this, about 30 of them. Somebody might want them. Uh, metal roof on one of the buildings. Uh, you know, again, somebody might want to come in and, uh, you know, put a bid on this and, and come get that metal roof. Uh, a screen door. Um, you know, when I seen that screen door, I said, man, that is just so nice to, for somebody to come in here and just demolish. Uh, there's a, a there's a, a porcelain sink out there. There's a porcelain toilet. There's a porcelain urinal. Uh, now they're not new. Uh, I mean, so again, you know, if somebody gets into the um, uh, the antique type things there, you know, these things again might be worth some money to somebody. So again, I'm just asking approval that, that we'll put this uh, with approval tonight. We'll put this out for a closed bid. Yeah, let's go ahead and go to the next attachment. No, 
if approved, just like any other, uh, uh, we'll, we'll start the, uh, we'll receive the bid September 9th. That's before the next board meeting. Uh, and again, all the legal uh, and the dates and times on there. Uh, and again, you know, and then I'll bring this back to you next uh, in September board meeting to see if you approve any of this. Okay. So Mr. Danner needs approval to go ahead and, and initiate this process to Lord declare this surplus uh, property. Six a motion to approve the surplus of these items. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Individual parts or the, the whole lot? Are you, is it the whole lot or individual pieces can be? Individual pieces. So you've got a you got a motion a second, and then there was some discussion. So I guess you need to vote. All right, do we need to vote again? All right. Everybody in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Danner. Uh, the next one's actually yours too to help facilitate. Is there any public comment, Mr. Denner? No, sir, not at this time. Okay. Hearing none, we will advance on to Ms. Wynn. Thank you, Mr. Danner. Ms. Financial. Item number 14 is to approve the school quarterly financial reports. And uh, by law, we present these quarterly and seek board approval. So, Ms. Wynn, the floor is yours. Good evening. We do. And Welcome we back. Off. We start off with Blue Ridge Elementary, and this is July the 1st, 2019 through June the 30th, 2020. So it actually gives you not just the quarterly reports, but the reports for the entire year. We'll just kind of continue on. You, we have East Fannin then, and then West Fannin. in Fannin and County Middle School. And the high school. And then we'll have CTAE should be after the high school. And that will present all of the student activity accounts for all of the schools. We see these quarterly and I just want to commend you again for uh, the the order that you brought to this process and the consistency that you brought to the reporting at the school level. It's all clean, it's all consistent, uh, and uh, makes the data very easy to follow. So thank you. And everyone at the school really loves the, yeah. the having that software as well. Mr. Chair, I recommend approving the quarterlies as presented. Chair six motion to approve our quarter report. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is also Ms. Wins, and this is to approve the FY20 final amended budget. Ms. Wynn? Yes, we start off with our general fund, and this just has our original revenue and our final budget. It has any amendments, mostly their state amendments from QBE, and just changes in state. Um, so that's our total revenues, and then our expenditures stay the same, even though there's some changes between. We still have total expenditures of 37.3 and 37. They stayed the same. Um, and then continue on. We have special revenues, and that's just the adjustments for our special revenues budgets for the entire year. Um, it adds the CARES Act and, and other items that needs to be added for the budget. And something different that I presented is actually to a, a, our SWASH budget. So you can actually compare our 20 budget and compare, I presented to you our actual revenues and expenditures. And so this is just kind of cleans up where our expenditures were at from where we budgeted it to. And it really helps me more for planning and, and processing and doing the, our work than versus it's not required, but it makes it cleaner. And so that's why I present the budget for amendment. I'm pleased with this work. It's clean and uh, it certainly shows our financial health. And I'm thankful that, uh, that we're financially strong, especially at this time. Uh, recommend that we pass this final amendment budget as presented, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I have a motion to approve the amended budget. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, the next item then ties to this. This is to approve the district financial report, Ms. Wynn. This is for June the 30th at 100% complete. Our local resources, we're at 100.6.15% versus 98% percent last year. Our total revenues are at 103.48% versus 98% last year. And then our total expenditures are at 92.73% versus 94% last year. 
and that presents everything before the accrual of expenditures. Mr. Chair, this is a healthy financial report. I recommend we approve it. The Chair, I have a motion to, to approve our financial report for June. So moved. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you, Board. Next item is the SPLOST update. This is simply amazing, folks. <laughs> Open that attachment up and zoom in, Mr. Ensley. Ms. Wynn, tell us about that. Yes, this is $663,558.28. It is 29% growth from the prior year. It is a Last month was a record, and this month is even more of a record. So we set a record in May. We set a record in June. So this is actually the three things here. This is the highest June ever. This is... Highest collection ever. The highest collection ever, and it's also the greatest gain ever. That's, that's incredible. I'm thankful for the Fannin County economy. Uh, this, is, uh, this is simply amazing, especially at this time. It is. Not too awful many years ago, that would have been local funds. Yes, sir. All right, there's no approval needed on that. That's just shared for uh, information, uh, but certainly joyous information. So, all right, we'll go on to the next agenda item. And that is to approve revised FY21 budget timeline and tentative FY21 budget. Ms. Wynn, will you talk to us a little bit about this? Yes, this is our revised budget timeline. And so it really shows our, when we had our meeting, it shows our July 9th public meeting. And then we continue on for the advertisement, our meeting today. And then we will put in advertise for our next meeting, which is going to be August the 27th, the call meeting at 4 p.m. And that advertisement has been made and is currently published. Um, and that will we'll also advertise once approved, the a budget for advertisement as well and then approve, we'll have the meeting for the 27th, which will be in the newspaper to say that that budget would be adopted. Okay, so that's the first part of this that will require board approval, but note, if approved, then our next meeting will be a call meeting August 27th at 4 p.m. for the purpose of adopting the FY21 budget and setting the millage. So. Correct. Ms. Wynn, the next part. And the next part is the FY21 tentative budget, um, which is presented in general fund capital projects and special revenues. Our total estimated revenues for general fund is 34.6 million. Then our capital projects, 7.9. Special revenues, 4.8. And then our expenditures, um, which total 37.375, 18.2, and 5.0, shows our using general fund of 2.765 if we were to expend everything that we budgeted for. And that this budget, our revision of this budget will be considered for final adoption by the Board of Education at 4 p.m. on August 27, 2020 at the Fannin County High School Performing Arts Center, PAC in Blue Ridge. And that this will be what will be advertised in the newspaper. Any questions? I think you did a great job preparing this and outlining it in your presentation today at 530. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I will recommend approving the revised FY21 budget timeline and the tentative FY21 budget together, Mr. Chair, make that recommendation. Can the Chair have that motion? You have that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. And next is the 2020 tentative millage rate, Ms. Wynn. Yes, and our first item is to approve the revised 2020 millage timeline, and the only revision of that is naming August the 27th on Thursday at 4 p.m. to be the call board meeting. We will advertise tomorrow. I will submit the five-year history to the newspaper for it to be advertised on August the 19th. And you want to go on to B, the computation of the millage rate. This is our 2020 PT 32.1, which is the computation of our millage rate. 
it shows our 2019 tax net digest being 1,602,194,308 and the 2020 digest being the 1,653,192,129 which as I went over the increase in our debt digest the 2019 millage was set at 10.593 so following this the calculation of the 2020 millage rollback rate but due to reassessment will be 10.391 if that's what is set and adopted. Okay. And then your remaining attachments, uh, C? C is our 2020 FLPA revenue reduction, which this is also filed with the state when we file our millage rate and the rollback rate. And so that has the reimbursement value of 723953 and that's turned into the state. That's the forest land and things that are set aside. Okay, and D? And then D is our tax digest for 2020 in the five-year history of levy. This is what will be advertised in the newspaper as well, along with our um, projected budget that the Fannin County Board of Education does hereby announce that the millage rate will be set at a meeting to be held at the Fannin County High School Performing Arts Center on August 27, 2020 at 4 p.m. pursuant to the OCGA requirements um, and we publish our current year's tax digest and levy along with the history of the tax digest and levy for the past five years. And then the final attachment is E and these are the guidelines by which the law requires you to prepare all this, and this is basically set into this agenda item just for the, the record. For information, it's, it says if you go with a rollback rate or if you increase taxes, all the different requirements that you must meet. These are the rules by which Ms. Wynn prepared this? Yes, sir. So, Mr. Chair, it's, uh, I'm happy to approve the 2020 tentative millage rollback rate as presented, sir. So, we need a vote. Can the Chair have a motion that we approve our tentative millage rate? So moved. <laughs> second. Have a second. Is there any, di any discussion? <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> I love it. Great job, Ms. Wynn. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 20, local board training selections, Mr. Inslee. Thank you, Dr. Watney. Uh, we are well ahead of where we should be with our trainings. Uh, I know we, we have generally had a, like a retreat in the fall and a retreat in the, uh, the spring. However, with all COVID-19, they have actually postponed all trainings where that you can extend them up to September the 30th. We submitted ours way back in the spring before COVID ever hit, which was a good thing. So we are well ahead. Ahead. And we've got some potential trainings uh, that we'll be able to set up, but hopefully we'll have some retreats this year. But just want to kind of give you an update because generally this time of year we're starting to pick some of our selections. Uh, but we're really waiting on GSBA right now to kind of see what steps they're going to take after September the 30th. Just want to give you an update on that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Inslee. Any questions for Mr. Inslee about upcoming training? Okay, let's go ahead and go to personnel. Give you just a moment to open the personnel sheet dated August 13, 2020. Okay, on the personnel sheet, resignations, Kathy Cannon, effective 7 23 2020. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Chair, have that motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Yes, that's okay, and it was unanimous. Alrighty. Next resignation. In, in this resignation, I'll recommend this pending replacement of a certified teacher. Uh, this is Amber L. Grabowski. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Chair will make that motion. So moved. All in favor? You good? Okay. Next resignation is Connie K. Whitaker, effective 7 28 2020. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. That motion. I get a first. Make so that motion. Second. All in favor? 
Okay, thank you. Now we have recommendations, and I will say that uh, each of these recommendations is pending completion of paperwork, background check, and proper certification for the position. So the first recommendation is Tanya Birchfield, paraprofessional. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Can the Chair have that motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Next recommendation is Ashley Barton for the position of secretary. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Chair, have that motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Next is a transfer. This is Connie Knight in transferring school nutrition department to the school nutrition department cashier position. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Okay, thank you. The next recommendation is substitute nutrition. Again, pending completion of paperwork, background check, and certification. Yvonne Sams. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. The Chair have that motion. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Okay, thank you. We have recommendations for substitute teacher. Again, pending completion of paperwork, background check, and certification. I'll take these collectively. Alicia Ball, Katrina Jordan, and David Queen. Make the recommendation for all three, Mr. Chair. Chair seeking that motion. I'll move. So, Second. All in favor? Candy, you good? Okay. Recommendation for substitute nutrition, pending completion of paperwork, background check, and training. Jeffrey Holloway, make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Okay. Can the Chair have that motion? So moved. So moved. <laughs> I get a second. I'll second that. All in favor? And that concludes personnel. Brings us to item 22, superintendent's comments. And, uh, Susan, I want to com congratulate you on your work on the budget and uh, your work on the millage and your work with the county. I want to thank you, Lynn Doss, for your help with that as well. Uh, great job. And uh, this budget and the rolled back millage rate, it includes 180 plan days for students and no furloughs for faculty or staff. and we're able to recommend a rolled back millage rate. All of this during a pandemic and with a 10% cut from the state. And I just want to say, I want to thank the conservative leadership of this board that has allowed that to happen. And again, Susan, your hard work and, and our leadership for, uh, for controlling the spending as we advance through, uh, great job. And I'm just so thrilled to be able to say that we're doing all this and we're debt free. It's just simply, it's, it's, it's wonderful. This has been a most unusual, but still a phenomenal start of school year in the FCSS, and we have our principals here, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, this is a great start, as well as the directors who have helped to plan and the principals to implement the leadership necessary to make that happen. Thank you so much. And each board member visited a school on the first day, and I'm sure that they're going to talk about that in their, in their comments as we go through. But uh, it was a great first day. There was a lot of preparation and hard work. But again, it was a terrific start. I'd like to congratulate those FCCLA students. And, uh, and Mr. Roof, I'd like to see them come in at some point and we could recognize them for that. Uh, that, that uh, that's fantastic. And uh, also for that $5,000 donation for, uh, for robotics at the elementary school, we thank Tennessee Valley Robotics for that. Uh, Ms. Miller, Ms. Rigdon, Mr. Danner, uh, again, your presentations were great. Mr. Roof, Ms. Finley, Mr. Inslee, Thank you for your work on the transparency of, of disclosing the data and, and giving the, the public the confidence of the things that we're doing uh, to, to help keep them informed. Uh, Candy and Denver both, I commend your staffs. You know, we, we went home in March with our routine. We created a brand new routine over the course of a weekend. And then we come back to a different routine than we ended with on March 13th. And uh, you guys have made it just flow so, so seamlessly. Uh, and I've enjoyed the peace of mind of here comes the bus. I, I really am uh, very appreciative of that. And I, I, you're always pushing and, and, and getting us to the next level with safety and technology. And kind of as we talked about, uh, I remember the days of buses before radios. And uh, radios were a game changer. And I think here comes the bus is the next game changer uh, with, our, with our transportation department. So I'm glad that we have that. I uh, want to thank uh, technology for all that you're doing to make all this stuff go in the background. And... Uh, safety. Uh, thank uh, Matt for the, for the pledge and going back to safety with Darwin with the invocation. You did a great job and I noticed you on patrol this morning 
down there and those new flashing, uh, flashing lights that the city of Blue Ridge has helped set up for us to, to get the 20 mile an hour speed zone in front of Fannin County High School. And so we want to thank the city of Blue Ridge for their work on that and your enforcement of that, uh, Lieutenant Couch, keeping us safe. We appreciate that too. And uh, it's just simply awesome, y'all, to see all these departments and the schools and the personnel and the community come together for the benefit of our students. We are simply blessed here in Fannin County. And we're thankful. Mr. Chair. Who wants to go first? Go ahead. I'll be glad to. What an exciting time to get to welcome students back to the school system. I was president at East Fannin and the, the excitement and the anticipation on the faces of those children was inspiring. It, 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 it's truly, truly inspiring to see them there. And uh, I, I certainly pray that we can keep them safe and continue. Uh, so much good, good news tonight, even in the midst of this pandemic. I've often, well, I'll just say that Dr. Guatney has many talents, and some of you have heard this before, but I believe one of his greatest talents is identifying individuals who have the aptitude and the spirit and the heart to fill a position. He's, he's great at, at recognizing the strengths and then empowering that individual to be successful in their role. And you've seen great examples of that tonight. Uh, everyone that presented, Mr. Inslee, Ms. Ms. Wynn, Mr. Danner, uh, Ms. Rigdon, Mr. Roof, uh, thank you for your diligence. I had to get a second opinion to get in the building tonight. I'm serious, thank you for your diligence. And, and Ms. Miller, your presentation tonight and your heart for that program is just remarkable. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's so evident that each one of you are in the position that you should be in. And so thank you, Dr. Faulkner, for, for that guidance. It's an honor to serve. Thanks for allowing me to be a part of this, this organization, part of this team. I agree with all that Terry said. I'm still crying inside or weeping or my heart's still smiling from the Ms. Miller's presentation about special, special is the, the proper word. God is love and you guys must be filled with it. Uh, teachers are the most precious, important people in the world in my opinion. And if teachers aren't essential, then I, I don't know what you would, how you would define essential. Y'all certainly, certainly are, you're, you change our world. Our children's lives are just, it's what y'all do is just marvelous. I hope y'all know it within yourself and that you appreciate what you're doing with your lives. Because it's, it's, it's awesome. So uh, I'll stop there, and once again, I'll say, y'all are essential. You are very essential. My turn? Sure. <laughs> Anyhow, I'd like to appreciate every, say I appreciate everybody being here tonight. Uh, normally, I'm in the bed right now. <laughs> so I, so I got to feel myself, see if I'm still awake or not. But anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, no, I was privileged to go to Blue Ridge uh, for the opening, and uh, when I got there, there was people standing in line going up to the doors that hadn't opened yet, and I went out and talked to Mr. Jim. He was having fun uh, with all the cars coming at him, the bus coming at him, and all of that, but he done a tremendous job. While I was standing there, Miss Miller and Miss Huff came, and I was privileged to get to go through Blue Ridge with those two ladies, and they had a blast, and so did I. Uh, the only question that I had when I got home was, my wife said, did you see any kids crying? I said, no, I didn't see the first one. They was all excited to be there. And uh, my hope and prayer is that our children are safe, 
they get a good education this year, and our staff that works with them, they're safe too. So with that, I'll say good night. Mr. Cole. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Ruth, the great work that you're doing. I'm proud of you. You've done an awesome job. Uh, uh, just uh, you excite me every time. Uh, the whole leadership uh, team here uh, that, that gets it done, uh, from Sarah Rigdon to Shannon Miller to Mr. Inslee, Mr. Danner, just uh, awesome group of leaders. And uh, thank you so much for the hard work and the excitement and the heart that I see uh, from you. And uh, while I got to go to West Fannin, Miss Danner, who's doing an awesome job. Uh, hope she's listening. So uh, she's doing a tremendous job, such excitement in her eyes, and uh, I expect such great things from her and in, in, in that school. Um, that maintenance job that y'all did on, on all the schools, not just West Fannin, but uh, Mr. Danner, awesome. Teachers were telling me over and over, do you see what they did? Through my whole walk through there, they're constantly bringing out that the, the work that they did in, in, in the maintenance. Um, kudos to the cafeteria workers because they're doing extra work, making sure everybody's separated, everybody's got the right stuff. And uh, I, I seen them working, sweating, you know, that place was hot. And uh, they're working really hard. That's, that's excitement. The custodial people doing the extra job to sanitize and get all that done and uh, I just want to shout out to them because they don't they don't normally see that um, just just great stuff um, lastly I have to say to Miss Tori Arp thank you for the excitement in my little girl who loves your class I mean she is uh, uh, I'm my child is special anyway to me, right? Like everybody's is, but I saw a lull in third and fourth grade and don't really know what it was. But there's something about, I don't know if it's just getting back to school, uh, but Miss Arp has really uh, done something for her. And there's such an excitement about going to school again and, and learning, and uh, that excites me. So I, I need to give her kudos. And just thank you all for being here. Thank you for letting me be a part of this great school system. Awesome. So I wouldn't add anything to anything anybody said. It's all been great, and I agree with every bit of it. And I will say that you do have an incredible staff. Um, first day of school, I got privileged to go to the high school, and I've said it many a times. Uh, I like to see the eyes of the kids, especially when you're being able to shake their hands when they come across from graduation. You know, get to see all the hopes and dreams and stuff in them. But this was a little different, a little more special to me. I've never actually been at the high school and actually got to see them come through and see their eyes and all of the, the unknown, but still the same excitement, the same hope, all that. I believe it was even brighter this year just to me, what I've seen. It was, it was incredible. And that, that's something I'll cherish, uh, was to be up here and to be able to see all of them and just where they hadn't been able to see each other all the time. That, that was amazing. Something that I truly, truly will take with me for a long time. But uh, you're talking about kids and stuff, and about your own kids being ready and being happy to be back in the school. Of course, safety is a big thing to all of us. And me and the wife were trying to ask our kids when school was fixing to come up if they were ready. You know, do you need to start packing everything? And my littlest one said, "Daddy, I've been ready since three weeks when school let out." She had her backpack already packed and ready, how excited she was. She wanted to be back in school. Well, I am tickled to death, and I've seen such a joy in both of them. Their energy's up, they're so excited just to be around their friends. Uh, you know, used to you'd think more about school wasn't that great of a thing, but this has been absolutely wonderful for my family. And I appreciate all y'all's hard work. Every one of you that's sitting in here that's listening, teachers, custodians, maintenance, cafeteria workers, transportation, every single one of these, all the hard work that you put in to make this possible. Just, if it's just for my two, it was worth it because the excitement in them is, is amazing. So with that, I say thank you. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.
Second. All in favor? 